right here, guys, right on the end of this log. Look at that. They will hide inside of mailboxes and they will actually use that echoey sound to help loudened their call to draw on the females. Uh-oh. Under the light and heat of the scorching Australian sun, the outback looks nearly inhospitable for living creatures. The parched landscape is dappled with sparse trees and dense underbrush. This is the type of environment where you'd expect to find reptiles like snakes and lizards, certainly not a menagerie of amphibians. However, as the sun sets and darkness creeps in, the nighttime temperatures begin to cool. This atmospheric change creates a comfortable setting that allows the more fragile animal species to emerge from hiding without the threat of being scorched by the intense daytime heat. Tonight we are out exploring the wild lands of Meandara, a remote town set far into the easternly stretches of the outback, nearly 250 miles from any bustling city. This formula of time, temperature, and location equates to the perfect conditions for encountering a variety of Australian frog species. But first, we have to find the last and most important element, a permanent body of water. All right, guys, we have made it to our target location. And as you can see, it's pretty dark out, which is the perfect time to search for amphibians. And if you listen, there are a ton of frogs calling. So I have a feeling we're gonna be getting various species up close for the cameras tonight. So if you guys are ready, let's get into the water and see what we can find. Watch out for snakes in this tall grass. Where there are frogs, there will definitely be snakes hunting. It's like grass all totally saturated with water. It smells like cow dung. I think I'm actually walking in cow poop right now. All right, let's go around the outside of this tree here and make our way this direction. Try to keep your uh, eyes up as well, it turns out. Yeah, that is a big spider and one very elaborate web. All right, let's just cleverly move around the outside of that. Oh, there's a frog right there, look at this. What do you got? Oh yeah, it's right here, it's tiny. It's a spotted marsh frog. Hold on, I gotta be really delicate with this one. Got it. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, come here. Hold on. Got it. Hey, guy. That is a spotted marsh frog right there. It's a little frog. Oh, yeah, teeny tiny. Actually, he's missing his front hand. Look at that. He's got a nub hand. Oh, little lost guy. That to a predator. Yeah, possibly so. Maybe even another frog. All right, well, let's let him back down onto the ground and continue hunting. All right, see you later, buddy. Gotta watch everywhere you step. This place is covered in frogs. Now, I noticed that there's a lot of cow tracks. Yes. They seem to make really good little burrows for these frogs. They really do, and we're actually in a cow pasture right now, and the frogs are able to hide down in those little crevices. As you can hear, the frogs are everywhere. It's just a matter of actually finding them almost like needles in a haystack out here. It's a lot tougher than you'd think. Let's keep making our way this direction around the pond. What do you got? Two different frog species. And actually, I think I bumped into a turtle out there. Something bounced off my legs, but I had my hands full. And on my left here is the desert tree frog, Australia's most widespread frog species. And on my right is the emerald spotted tree frog. And they get that name from all the emerald speckling that is scattered across its back. And I love this one's eyes, look at that. They have a star shape right in the middle. Almost looks like the gray tree frogs that we're used to seeing in Ohio. Side by side. All right, well let's let these two go and see if we can find something a little bigger.
right here guys, right on the end of this log, look at that. That's a white tree frog, can you see it? My flashlight beam there? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a big one we've been looking for. Hold on, let me catch it real quick, you got a good shot on it? Yeah. Oh, hey, you're not going anywhere, baby. Oh, so cool. Right, let me get my hands wet, get wet first. Ready, you got a shot on it? Yeah. Look at that. That is one of the largest frog species here in Australia. That is the white tree frog, also known as the Australian green tree frog, or some people call it the dumpy frog. Oh my gosh, he's so cool. Look how chubby he is. I've never seen this frog before. Oh, look at this, just climbing. There we go, just sit on my wrist there. And actually, you know what, this is a female. The way you can tell the difference between the females and the males is that the females are a bit larger and the underside of their chin is completely white. The males have a pale gray underside to their chin. Look how chubby that frog is. That is a super chubby frog. Now what they will do and why they're sometimes so chubby, they can actually be chubbier than this, is they store water underneath their skin. That water reserve works in times of drought to keep these frogs hydrated. Wow, how cool looking is that creature? Looks like a big green booger. Now, it's not real distinct on this frog, but can you see all that white speckling on the side of the body and across the back there? Yeah. That is one very distinct feature about these frogs. And their individual little toe pads are so incredibly sticky. Like most tree frog species, they're capable of hanging onto almost anything. You see what's doing right there? That's sort of a defense pose. It's curled itself up into a ball and it's thinking, okay, if I don't move, maybe I will stay completely camouflaged on Coyote's arm. This is about as well behaved as you can get for a frog. I thought it was gonna be jumping all over the place and it is so squishy. Look at how big that frog is. Look how green it is. You know, the cameras are facing that direction, buddy. Can we turn you around here? Let's see. Give us the dumpy shot. Let's see, how about like that? Does that work right there? Boy, it just wants to curl up on my elbow. Oh, here we go, going up my arm. Wow, look at that ability to crawl. Okay, you guys got a good shot there. Now, it reminds me of the lemur leaf frog, the way that it's just walking along as opposed to hopping. Where are you going? All the way on my back? We can't film you if you're on my back. back Is it still the there? You guys got an okay shot of it? Yeah. Okay, well, let's just keep talking. It seems to be comfortable. It's clearly running the show here. Now, these frogs have an incredible call. They're very, very loud. And one thing they will actually do is hide inside of hollow containers, like a mailbox, for example. They will hide inside of mailboxes and they will actually use that echoey sound to help loudened their call to draw on the females. Uh, oh, no, no. Uh-oh. Down into your back. Uh-oh. Okay, all right, slowly take off your pack. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah, oh, oh, a good place, look. Good place to hide. It's very comfortable there. Right, careful, careful, careful. I feel it, I feel it. I got it. Got him? Yep, there you go. Okay. Pass the frog. There we go, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and dip my hands again, make sure that we keep its body moist. Uh, anytime that you handle an amphibian, you wanna make sure that your hands are moist because our dry skin actually draws a lot of the moisture from their skin out of their skin. And while it is here in this body of water, we do wanna make sure that the frog is kept moist at all times. This may be one of the coolest tree frogs I have ever caught. It's amazing how uniform in design its skin is. Very smooth, very sleek, very shiny. Look at those little tiny eardrums. You see those just under those folds of skin? And these frogs can retain so much water that at points in time, those flaps of skin will actually fold down over the ears and sometimes over their eyes. There you go, just get comfortable right there. Perfect. That's an awesome shot. So Coyote, what do these frogs eat? Well, they are opportunistic, which means they will eat pretty much anything that can fit in their mouths, from insects to possibly even other frogs and small snakes. Now, is this one full grown? Is that a large frog? For a female, yeah, this is about full grown, and the females do grow larger than the males. This frog is pretty comfortable perched up on my finger there, but I think it is time to let it back off into the pond. Now we came to Australia expecting to find reptiles, and I was thinking to myself, well, it's so dry, we probably won't come across any amphibians. But lo and behold, tonight here, by this body of water, we come across several frog species, including the dumpy tree frog. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild, 
We'll see you on the next adventure. Working within special permits, and alongside the renowned experts from Australian Wildlife Encounters, we were pleasantly surprised to learn that aside from the reptilian species, a wide variety of amphibians also call this rugged landscape home. Who would have ever imagined that a stinky old cow pond could also double as an aquatic paradise for some of the outback's most incredible frogs? Hey, Coyote Pack, I have some exciting news. I'm proud to announce that the crew and I will be back on tour in 2018 with Brave Wilderness Live, visiting cities all across North America. Our first shows are in Anaheim and San Diego, California. From there, we head to Phoenix, Arizona. Beyond that, we will be visiting San Francisco, California, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, and Boulder, Colorado, with many more shows to be announced in the coming months. Tickets can be purchased at the Brave Wilderness website, so make sure to reserve your seats today. And don't forget, subscribe, so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. I'm Kyrie Peterson. Be brave! <laughs>